Hello students, welcome to the channel. In yesterday's video, I made a list of six math topics that are frequently tested on the ECT. Those topics were picked up from the first half of the ECT math section. And so those were rather basic topics because the first half has easier questions. In today's video, we look at the more advanced topics that come repeatedly on the ACT math section. This has been gleaned from analysis of questions 40 to 60 of every math section since 2018. The first topic by far is geometry. If you include plane, solid and coordinate geometry, this accounts for a whopping 61 questions in the math tests since 2018. The concepts that are tested here include the area of plane figures like square, rectangle, and circle, the perimeter of these plane figures, linear coordinate geometry, the equation y equal to mx plus c, where m is the slope and c is the y-intercept, parabola, the equation y equal to a times x minus h whole squared plus k, where h comma k is the vertex, and other variations of this. Circle coordinate geometry, the equation x minus h whole squared plus y minus k whole squared is r squared, where h comma k is the center of the circle and r is the radius of the circle. On the right, you see all the test numbers since 2018 and the questions which pertained to geometry. Each of these questions has been solved on the channel, so be sure to check those out. I will also link to topic-specific playlists as we go along. We'll discuss each of those topics. So I'll link to those playlists in the description box. Okay, when it comes to solid geometry, the most common question refers to a rectangular prism, which is also known as a cuboid, a three-dimensional figure like this and the volume and surface area of this. And finally, the use of the volume formula for any figure that rises straight above, which is the area of the base multiplied by the height of the figure. So that was the first one in terms of numbers. The second topic in terms of numbers is advanced trigonometry. This accounted for 15 questions in my analysis. Here, the concepts that were tested were the sine rule, which is A over sine A is B over sine B is C over sine C. The cosine rule, which says cos A is B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC, and similarly formulas for cos B and cos C. Sine rule for area, the ASTC, rule for figuring out the sine or the cos of any angle. The identity, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is one. Graphs of sine and cos functions, formulas for sine A plus B, sine A minus B, cos A plus B and cos A minus B. And similarly, values for sine two pi plus theta, cos two pi plus theta and so on. Again, all of these topics have been discussed in a separate video, which I would link to. And the question numbers in the test are on the right. Okay, in terms of numbers, the third topic is probability. Now, probability on the ACT is varied. You have simple probability questions involving a two-sided coin, a six-sided die, or a 52-deck of cards. And uh, you also have probability of slightly more advanced variety, which involves, let's say, independent events, probability of an event not happening, which is one minus the probability of the event happening. And specifically, probability and combinations, a topic that has been coming a lot in recent tests. So all of these questions pertain to probability. Do check their solutions out. This was 14 questions on the analysis. The next is equivalent expressions. This accounted for 11 questions. There are two broad kinds of questions under equivalent expressions. One is algebraic, 
the kind that is shown here where an algebraic expression is given to you as opposed to solve it. So here I take the LCM of the denominator. So that is 2x plus 4. So with here, I get 2 times 2x plus 4 plus 3x times 2 because x plus 2 into 2 is this minus 6. So uh, 4x plus 8 plus 6x minus 6 over 2x plus 4. So 10x plus 2 over 2x plus 4. We can solve this further. Let's take two common 5x plus 1 over 2 common x plus 2. So 5x plus 1 over x plus 2. That's the answer. Okay, that's one kind of equivalent expression questions. The other involves exponents. For example, which of the following is equivalent to fourth root of x squared? And they would give you a number of options. So basically, fourth root of x squared can be written as x to the power 2 by 4. Whatever is the root becomes the denominator of the exponent. So that is x to the power 1 by 2, which is square root of x. So whichever option has square root of x would be the answer. So this was equivalent expressions, the fourth on the list. The fifth is statistics in terms of number. This accounted for 10 questions listed on the right. Here, you would be expected to calculate the mean, median, and range of a data set. You would be expected to calculate the standard deviation of a data set. And you would be expected to calculate these measures of central tendency, such as mean and median, when a data set is altered. So suppose I enter a new number to the data set, a number which is extremely large compared to other numbers or a number which is extremely small compared to the other numbers, what happens to the data set then? So those are the kind of questions that you get. Okay, then you have ellipse. Technically ellipse is part of geometry, but I included this as a separate topic. This appeared eight times on the tests. Here, you need to know the equation of an ellipse, the famous equation that I'm sure you're aware of, x squared by a squared plus y squared by b squared is one, when the ellipse is centered at the origin, and x minus h whole squared by a squared plus y minus k whole squared by b squared is one, when the ellipse is centered at h comma k. You must know what the major and minor axes of the ellipse are, you must know the center and you must know the foci of the ellipse. Again, all of these questions have been solved. I would also link to a detailed ellipse video in the description box. So do check it out. Then you had absolute value. Absolute value questions made up eight questions out of all of these tests that I looked at. I have a sample question here. Let x be a real number, which of the following statements is true for all possible values of x? Minus x less than x, this is not true. If x is, let's say, negative 3, then minus x is 3, and 3 is greater than negative 3. Minus x is less than mod x, that also is not true. Um, let's say x is negative 2, so then minus x is 2 and mod x is um, also 2. So they are equal, it's not less. x equal to mod x will be true only when x is greater than or equal to 0. So this is not true for all x. Okay, mod x is always equal to mod minus x, right? Because mod 5 is mod minus 5. And you can see that this is true for all numbers. So this is my answer. But minus mod x is not going to be equal to mod of minus x because this minus sign outside will stay. So D is the best answer. There are also questions on absolute value inequalities. So those are also included here on, in the list on the right. And finally, the eighth question among advanced topics that the ACT loves is complex numbers. This made up for seven questions on the list. Complex numbers, the basic unit is i, which is the square root of negative 1. So you have to know what that is. 
you should be able to add and subtract two complex numbers. You should be able to multiply and divide two complex numbers. And you should be aware of the argon plane. The argon plane is like the coordinate plane, except the x-axis represents the real part of a complex number and the y-axis represents the imaginary part of a complex number. So when I say that there is a complex number z, which is five plus seven i, on the argon plane, this is represented as five on the x side and seven on the y side. So this point, five comma seven represents the complex number five plus seven i, right? So any point on the argon plane represents a complex number where the x part represents the real part and the y part represents the imaginary part. Right, so those were the eight topics. We also have a list of honorable mentions. Logs, right, logs questions, the list is given here. Matrix product is a common question type. Again, the list is given here and I link to the video that explains how to multiply two matrices and what conditions matrices should meet. Vectors is asked. And there was this question which asks you to find the digit in the ones place of an exponent when the exponent is written as a number. So for example, if seven to the power 46 is written as a number, what is the digit in the ones place? This has to do with the cyclicity of the power of any number. So if you notice, 7 to the power 1, 7, 7 to the power 2, 49, 7 to the power 3 is, I think, 343, uh, 7, 9, 0, 63, yeah, 343, 7 to the power 4 is 1, carry 2, 7, 4 is a 28 and 2, 30, 0, carry 3, 21 and 3, 24, right? And then seven to the power five will be again something which ends with seven because one into seven. So seven, the powers of seven have a cyclicity of four because after the fourth power, the same digits repeat seven, nine, three, one, and so on. So this is the basic concept that is tested. Again, this is something that I have discussed when solving questions 55 and B04 and 57 and C03. So do check those questions out. So this was a quick video on the eight advanced math topics that the ACT loves. Hope this was useful. And I hope that over the next two days before the July 17 ACT, you would make use of this exercise to brush up any concepts that you're unaware of or have not learned. And also look at these questions from these recent tests and make sure that you are able to solve these. If this helped, hit like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comment section what other videos you'd like me to upload. I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Take care. Bye-bye.